By the beginning of the 12th century, Western Europe entered into a new phase of confidence. With the constant warfare of the Viking raids in the past, for a period of time, there was relative peace. Long-distance trade began to rebound as goods as far away as India and China flowed into Europe along a series of trading routes called the Silk Road. With trade came a renewed growth of cities. At the same time, there was the birth of the very first universities in Bologna, Paris and Oxford. Although Western Europe was divided into individual kingdoms, nearly all were unified under a single religion, Christianity, and a common written language, Latin. This was Christendom. Culturally, artistically, economically, the 12th century marked the zenith for medieval Europe. When you think of the Middle Ages, knights, ladies, jousting, kings, queens, castles, it's the 12th century you're thinking of. Welcome to Module 4 in Humanities and Western Civilization. All medieval society could be divided into three groups. Those that worked, the peasants, those that fought, the nobles, and those that prayed, the clergy. In the 12th century, though, this began to change. In the resurging cities, a new group of people began to emerge in greater numbers than ever before. The merchants, the bourgeoisie, or the middle class. In this module, we will also explore what this change meant. Beginning in the powerful Italian cities, the Renaissance was something truly new. A new class of people, educated for business, yet interested in the past, began to rediscover Europe's Greek and Roman heritage. The Renaissance spread by the printing press transformed medieval Europe into something truly different, truly new. While inspired by the past, Renaissance artists like Michelangelo and Leonardo da Vinci reached new artistic heights and inspired generations. At the same time, driven by commercial competition between different European kingdoms, Europe began to look outward. A new age of exploration began, ushering in centuries of cruelty and oppression of colonialism. The old world would now be reconnected with the Americas. In 1492, Columbus may not have been the first to discover the Americas, but he would usher in a new age, a global age. Increased literacy brought about by the Renaissance brings with it increased questions. By the early 16th century, the unity of Christian Europe was shattered by the Protestant Reformation. For two centuries, Europeans would go to war over the best way to be a Christian. As society began to change, so too did the distribution of power. Kings began to create their own standing armies. They elevated the newly educated middle class into positions in their growing bureaucracies and the old noble families began to slowly lose it all. When kings become powerful, we call them absolute monarchs. And we know you are no longer in the Middle Ages. We've entered into something new, the early modern era.